Hey, hey, Warrior Saints. Good morning. God bless and keep all of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Earlier this week, I had a really difficult day in midweek. I've been dealing with parishioners and just crises and all this kind of stuff going on, and I was exhausted. I wanted to go home and watch the game and just relax. So I walked in the door, and I said to my wife, I said, hey, I've had a really t- tough day. Make me a sandwich. It's going to start soon. And she gives me this kind of weird look, but she, she was gracious about it, and so she made a sandwich. Knowing that the game was about to start, I sat down on the couch, and as she brings the sandwich over, I said, hey, go get me the remote control so I can turn on the TV. It's going to start soon. And she looks at me with this kind of, now she's starting to get frustrated with this face, like, what, what are you doing? But gracious, again, my beautiful bride, she brings me the remote control, and I turn it on. I'm enjoying my sandwich, I'm watching the game, I'm relaxing, my body's starting to decompress after this difficult day, and I said, hey, go get me a beer. It's going to start any moment now. And she looks at me with this face, like, are you talking to me? I said, look, it's, it's going to start any second now. And she said, choose your next words very carefully, mister. She goes, you're worried about all these, this difficulty that you've had. I've had a terribly difficult day as well. I'm at home. I wake up early to take your kids to school. I make them lunches. I drive them to school. I pick them up. I take them to piano. They have sports. They have after-school activities. I make sure your house is taken care of. There's food on the table. There's, you know, the clothes are clean. Everything's set. And you know what? I don't even like you right now. Like, the way you're doing your hair, I can't even stand it. Your mom, I don't like your mom anymore. And you know what? I don't like how you sleep. You snore, you mouth breather. I am not your slave. Oh, it started. <laughs> get it? See what I did there? It started. <laughs> Wait on it. It'll get there. It'll get there. <laughs> Nothing? Nobody? Nobody? You didn't get that? That was good stuff. That was hard work to get there. Nobody got it. All right. <laughs> get it? It started, right? That was the thing I was avoiding. All right. I don't know. I preach the, the gospel, not tell jokes. I guess that's the... Uh... <laughs> but as we talk about slavery, it's an uncomfortable topic. It's something, especially in this country, that we, we don't necessarily, that we shy away from. Slavery, the forced, coerced labor of one person by another. We are forced, or a slave is forced against his or her will to work for another, to do another's bidding. In this country, we profess freedom. The United States of America has made tremendous strides, thanks be to God, in our history, from where we were to where we are today, where all men and women are free. And we enjoy those freedoms and we enjoy those rights. And yet, what if I were to tell you, you're not free? And you might say, wait, Father Chris, what are you talking about? Of course we're free. We can do whatever we want to do, right? What if I were to tell you, we're not free? Maybe in a secular sense. But in our lives, the way we live and the things that we do, are we really free? Or do we obey someone who is a master over us? Perhaps we obey sin, which pays us a wage of death. Or do we obey God, who offers us sanctification, holiness, and the end, eternal life? This is the question we want to explore today, and to do so, we're going to read the second half of St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 6. All right, so we did the first half last Sunday, we're going to do the second half this Sunday. Before we get into slavery, let's understand the context within which St. Paul was writing. It's the Roman Empire, and nobody is free except the emperor himself, a few senators that he chooses to make free, everyone else is a slave in the Roman Empire. Even those who may have been fathers of their households, they were slaves who had slaves underneath them, but they were subject to the emperor. Slavery was something that was common in the Roman Empire. It was a natural example because they all understood it. And St. Paul, talking to his, his Christians in Rome, he starts a discussion about slavery, asking the Romans if they really, really get it if they really understand what's going on. And we hear the following. Do you not know that if you yield yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? Either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Now this is a funny kind of slave, because the whole idea of slavery is that it is coerced upon you. You have no choice, no decision. You are a slave under a master. And you don't get to pick the master. 
And yet St. Paul is offering us a, a, a strange type of slavery in the sense that we have the choice who it is we serve. Sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Verse 17, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching which you were committed, right? Once slaves of sin. There's an interesting feature in the Roman household. If someone was a slave and I couldn't afford, if I was a master and I couldn't afford a slave or I didn't want him anymore or she wasn't effective, I would take her to the marketplace and sell that slave, right? And that slave would then go into the house of the new master, whoever that may be, right? So it wasn't that I just turned the slave free, turned the slave loose. They were always a slave. They just had a new house, a new master to whom they had to obey. And I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just, sorry, I skipped verse 18. Go back, Gray. You were obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Do you see that? It's just like the Roman household. They're not free. They're free from sin. But now are slaves of righteousness. Do you follow that? So you and I, who have been baptized into Christ, though we may profess in this great land which we live a freedom, indeed you are out there, but in your heart and in your mind and in your life, you have a master. You have to choose which one. And if you choose God, you are simply set free from sin. And this has great consequences, as we'll see in just a moment. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once yielded your members to impurity and greater and greater iniquity, so now yield yourselves, yield your members to righteousness for sanctification. Right? He's now saying in your decision, in your choice, you must choose wisely. You used to submit to sin. Now yield yourself and your members to righteousness. Because righteousness leads to sanctification. This is an interesting word in Greek. It's agiasmos, holiness. It's the same word where we get saint, right? It translates as sanctification, but it's holiness. You yield yourselves to righteousness unto holiness. Now listen, as we conclude these last few verses. When you were slaves of sin... You were free in regard to righteousness. Remember what we talked about before? If I am a slave under the house of a master, I am obedient to him. I don't have to worry about the other master, right? So when you were a slave of sin, you didn't have to worry about righteousness. You already had a master, someone who was lording over you. But what return did you get from the things of which you are now ashamed? So when I was a slave of sin and doing sin's bidding, what did I get? What was the end of those things? Death, right? What does sin pay with? What is the wage of sin, the money, if you will, that it pays its slaves? Death. But now you have been set free from sin, right? Americans love it. Now you've been set free. It's like, yeah, I'm free. That's not what it says. Now you have been set free from sin, right? We are still slaves, but our master, the old one, sin, Pays us with death. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. Right? It's a different household. It's a different master. We have been taken to the marketplace, if you will, and sold and purchased by a new master. This master is different, however. He's very different. The return you get in this new household... Remember, sin gave us death. In God's household, the return is sanctification, holiness. And its end, the promise for maintaining that holiness, eternal life. You see it. It's simply that we are in a new household. And it ends with this. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a very strange setup for slavery. And yet we know that we are obedient to someone as a master. And the challenge put before us today, 
what Paul is asking us when we hear this text, and by the way, this is the same chapter that we read in our baptismal service. Chapter 6 is part of the baptism in the Orthodox faith. So from your very first day in the church, Paul is saying to us, you must choose wisely. Choose who your master will be. Who will you serve? Will you serve sin? I hope not, because sin will pay you with death. Or you can choose to be slaves of God, and he will grant to you sanctification. And if you maintain that, eternal life, right? You see it. And so we have been given an opportunity that no other slave ever gets, and that is to decide who we shall serve. And so we come to our practical point, and it's very simple and super hard. Choose wisely. Making that decision of who you will commit to. Obviously, I know that we're here because we choose God and not to be slaves of sin. So how do we do that? Now that we are going to leave sin behind, how do we do that? We have to choose wisely. The first thing, it's time for us to upgrade where we spend our time. Where we spend our time. So I want you to think about where you spend time. Whether it be physically in a casino or virtually, online, perhaps at a casino, or on pornography sites, or watching trash on Facebook or wherever else, right? Are we running after sin in the places that we go? Do we put ourselves, remember this metaphor we use all the time, like a sponge. If it's in a bucket, it will have no choice but to absorb the water. So make sure the water in your bucket is pure and clean. It is purified, right? Upgrade where you spend your time. As we are deciding to be free from sin, to be slaves of God, let us upgrade where we spend our time. And let me say this to you. Each and every Sunday, obviously, you know our community is is large and growing. Our, our, Our educational programs, they grow. Thank God. We are having a blast each and every week. However, there are many of us who don't spend time in the educational programs that we offer. I use it only as one example. I know what you're doing. Rather than spending your time learning the gospel of Jesus Christ with your fellow warrior saints, playing on your video games on your phone, you're watching Facebook, you're watching Netflix, right? Or worse, you understand. Upgrade where you spend your time. Now that leads into the second point, and it's, as, it's equally as important, maybe even more so. Upgrade who you spend your time with. Now, we often think of this as for our high school and our young people, right? Like, you know, you want to surround yourselves. You know the saying, you become like the five people you spend the most time with. I think that's true. Imagine how much influence, right, you, someone has on you when you spend time with them. And it's not to say that people we're with today are somehow bad or that we want to judge them. It's not our place to decide that. But have, have the desire to spend time with someone who is stretching you, who will stretch you, who will make you reach farther to become better than you are today. Upgrade who you spend your time with. Find someone who you want to emulate, to be like, and spend time there. Do you understand? Upgrade who you spend your time with. In leaving behind sin and deciding in in the one freedom that we have to be slaves of God, it is so important that we let, and let's use the metaphor one more time, the bucket of water in which we are a sponge be pure and clean. Make sure the places you go, the people you're with, and the actions that you take are worthy of being called a slave of God. Beloved in Christ, choose wisely. God bless and keep you. Amen.